I joined this modded city called NoPixel where they've made it as close to real life as possible. This is my character Karthik Manuel, or Thick Man for short. He combines the heart of a lion with the appearance of an overly affectionate stepdad. I recently bought myself a new truck, which I'm awfully pleased about. Would you guys like to go on a date with me? I'm taken, uh, sorry. That's, uh, that's my truck over there. Now, would you like to go on a date with me? Um, I... I'm sorry, I don't date gold diggers. Cause I am the baddest of them all. I'm still poor, however, so I need to make money fast. I load into my apartment, bold and primed. As I head outside, I come across a woman called Barbara. I then proceed to do something that I'm not proud of. I become the perfect gentleman. What's your name? Ah, uh, Carth- uh, Don't tell me, I'm gonna call you Baldy. Uh, all right, I can live with Baldy. Uh, you get that? Yo, what? You don't have to do that. No, that's cool. I was nice to someone and they gave me a thousand dollars. I'm sure there's a lesson here, but there's no time to learn it as I need to get a job. I also keep fading in and out of consciousness, which obviously isn't great. It's likely because I'm living on the poverty line and nearing starvation. As I can't get a job as a sponsor child, I do the next best thing. I unite with this hoodlum and begin my journey as a dodo delivery driver. Driving large commercial vehicles in my condition can only lead to good vibes. Drift King, they call me. Oh, oh, oh. What the f It's not glamorous, but it's honest work and we make a cool $1,600. My partner even gave me a joint, so I smoke it to try and fix my medical issues, but if anything, it just makes them worse. It's time to stop the 420 and accept that Jesus is plenty. I head over to my favorite Uwu cafe and the police are here just keeping the streets safe. I pay my taxes on my little dodo delivery income, yet bodies still litter the pavement. Given I'm knocking on death's door, I treat myself to a deluxe combo meal. They even kindly throw in a medical pack so I don't drop dead in their venue. I guess they draw the line at corpses inside the building. I give myself first aid. Everything Thick Man does looks incredibly seedy, I love it. I finish off my kawahi curry and on the way out I give this cat a little pat. This is a rule they enforce which I think we can all appreciate. As I drive away from the morgue, I see a gorgeous older woman looking like a snack in the burger shot car park. Last time I approached a girl, I pocketed a thousand dollars so I decide to shoot my shot again. Would you like to go on a date with me? I'm drunk. Oh, this is inappropriate. Yeah, what kind of creep asks a girl on a date while she's drunk? This, this kind of creep. She collapsed mid pickup attempt. She keeled over and then my words literally killed her. Like the video if you would go on a date with Karthik Manuel. I don't dwell on this low point for long and instead I network. I meet this couple on a dirt bike who ask if I want to go fishing with them. Of course I agree as if I can catch a big fish then I can update my dating profile picture. We have to take separate cars because we only have two seaters. That's okay as I'm just hungry to catch myself a 600 pound Indo-Pacific blue marlin. The sun's rising and in my opinion it's metaphorical. This is a new start for Karthik Manuel to prove he's more than just a grandma killer. The worst possible thing then happens. You see my truck I nicknamed Shaniqua doesn't exactly hug the road. Like the chief F1 Ferrari engineer isn't calling me up and asking for downforce tips and tricks. I completely lose control of the big girl and we just go flying off the side of a relatively massive cliff face. My most expensive asset is now bathing in the ocean. Old Karthik has seen better days, but at least it's surely up from here. Hey, you need a lift? Hey bro, hey, thank you. Yeah, that'd be great, man. I'm just heading up to the shops really close. <laughs> The dodgy malacca locked the door and then snort laughed at me. Maybe one of the most alpha things I've witnessed in recent times. I reach the shop and immediately attempt to buy a firearm. I'm unable to do so because I don't have a gun license which apparently I need to obtain from a judge. It's officially easier to get guns in real life America than virtual America. No, but I understand why they have to be careful giving out weapons. For example, if I had a Glock in my back pocket, I would have double tapped that grandma for rejecting Karthik's fine ass. Not really sure what to do in this situation, I decide to just say good day to two upstanding citizens. What do you guys do with yourself? Uh, accountants. I accountants, I can tell. <laughs> Tax accountants. Accountant. You're the vice president of the accountants. Uh, sure, we'll go with that. This guy Damien, who honestly might be the best person I've met, decides to give me a job. He also gives me a lock pick so that I can steal a car because due to unavoidable circumstances, mine is unavailable. As you would have already guessed, Damien isn't in the finance industry. Rather, he's the vice president of a motorcycle gang called the Sinister Souls. He asked me to drive down to a tool shop so that I could purchase something truly horrific for the gang. He asked me to buy a metal detector and a gardening trowel. My new mission is to walk around the beach looking for scrap metal. My character looks like he is 100% trying to take photos of sunbathers. Then out of nowhere, I find a diamond in the rough. 
I dig up a gold Rolex which could just be my ticket into Damien's good graces. And now all we can do is hope the man likes having his wrist ice cold. I message asking where he is and while I wait I head over to my now regular spot the Uwu Cafe aka Corp City. This adorable cat tea room makes 1942 Stalingrad look like a gated community. What's going on big nuts? Hey mate how are you? Of course you got some big nuts. Yeah, I appreciate you noticing. How can I not? You don't squat 80 for 8 to not wear short shorts? Uh, look. Scott and I decide to consummate our bromance by heading over to the casino and trying our luck. $250 for a membership and then I lose all my money on the spinning wheel. God, gambling can ruin your life quickly. Speaking of, I'd like to thank today's video sponsor, Pellybet. Only really, really smart people gamble. Scott loses money too and then just sort of stands there in shock for a long time so I have to sadly leave him as Damien's ready to meet. To compound our issue, my stolen car got stolen while I was inside so I have to steal another one. Except my lockpick isn't good enough for luxury classed cars unless you were gassed up on Adderall. I couldn't find a vehicle anywhere but then I found something that was less than ideal. This is not my first choice as it's definitely strange meeting the vice president of a gang in a commercial truck that says good aids on the side. The first impressions are important and I can't help but feel like I'm fumbling the bag. And to make matters worse, I misjudge the height of this sign. Those low clearance heights sure know how to kick a man when he's down. I drive around looking for Damien and then eventually he texts me saying, yeah I think I saw you in the box truck trying to enter the plaza. I was hoping you missed that. I got a, I've got a gift for you man. Yeah what's that? I'll just put it in the glove box for you, it's my grandfather's Rolex. Uh, you can keep this. You don't want it? Uh. I'm good. He rejected my gift and then my microphone arm setup started collapsing in real life. Really advanced screwdrivers, you know? Literally and figuratively, everything is rapidly falling apart for your boy. Then in a moment of pure chad, Damien extends an olive branch. Okay, so here's a question. You, you wanna, you wanna do like some uh... Damien, you want me to kill right? someone? I'll kill someone, bro. I got you. Okay, no, 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 not, not kill someone. He didn't want me to kill anyone, but hot damn was I ready to. Damien decides to show me the ropes of being a criminal, which is absolutely perfect. When Karthik was a little bald kid, he didn't lie awake at night imagining his life as a dodo delivery driver. He introduces me to this NPC who tells me which houses I need to rob. He then helps me find a suitable van for burglaries and sets me on my way to start hitting houses. The key thing he's looking for is a strong rope that we can use to pull ATM machines off the wall. Earlier today we were rolling off the side of a cliff and now we're completing an apprenticeship in organized crime. I leave the nest and exactly 26 seconds later this happens. Is it Karthik Man Man Manuel? Manuel? Karthik Manuel, yeah, yes sir. It's uh it's oh, Indian. Ah, oh, oh. uh, it's my mate's vehicle. Uh, what's your mate's name? Uh his name is Barrett. You got his phone number by chance, so I can call and just make sure you know that he knows that you busted out the window off his vehicle. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't believe in phones. He's more of a. He was like off technology. It's actually quite beautiful. Hmm. The big dog let me off with a speeding ticket, which I'll take as a win given the stolen van and my intentions with it. The problem now is that I'm no longer broke. I'm in debt. I feel like the only person we can blame for this is Scott. Curse you, Scott, you handsome devil. I arrive at the final property and it's an apartment complex with more doors than the Monsters Inc. Incorporated factory. I look everywhere but I can't find the unit I'm meant to break into. I thought cops or gangs would be the issue, not logistically locating the residence, but that's just the kind of curveball a life of crime throws at you. Eventually I find a house and break in. I start rummaging through the cabinets and it's super nostalgic of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. In this very first house, I find the exact piece of rope Damien needs. I also find a muffin and a joint and so I decide to treat myself. One day I'll be doing this in a house that I actually own. I wouldn't say I took to the burglary life like a pelican to water but I got it done. Just casually stealing bronze marble sculptures it's all good. I head down to the pawn shop excited to make bank and it's closed. I probably should have checked that was open earlier. This is alarming as I put all my eggs in the cat burglar basket and now I'm starting to starve to death again. I head down to burger shot to get a meal. He's hot. Thank you. It's really sweet of you. No, sorry, I wasn't talking about you, sir. Damn. Who are you talking about? Oh. I'm talking about that guy. Is ready to oh. You think he's hotter than I am? <laughs> well, hey, hey. He's got hair for one. Yeah, whatever. And one of those it's rolled jeans. Hey, here's my number, honey. I'm not I'm eating not here. Helpful. I refuse to eat here. I caused the scene so that I could desperately take the food and leave without paying, but she was two steps ahead and never put my order on the tray. She's good at her job and hurting my feelings. There's no time to eat as Damien has asked me to meet him at the beach so we can get down to business. 
I initially misunderstood his meeting place and ended up having a gang point a sawn off shotgun at my face. Unfortunately, they were really chill and let me go about my day. I go and meet Damien at the super secret meeting place and he's like, bro, can you metal detect this beach? I wouldn't have guessed that metal detecting would play such a big part in today's video. My first activity with the Sinister Souls is not what I expected, but it's surprisingly wholesome. We're all out looking for a safe cracker for this ATM job. Damien then asks me to keep looking while they handle something else, but I'm knocking on death's door. All I've had to eat in three days is that tiny muffin. In what I can only assume is the no pixel version of becoming a stripper, I drive back to Dodo Prime Deliveries and find a partner to do a shift with. I think it hurts more because Dodo is the lowest rank in my Discord server and people frequently use it as a derogatory insult. You looking for a tour? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I join you. The underpaid backbone of this economy. As we're finishing up our shift, Damien calls saying they're ready to meet and tells me where to meet them. Yeah, yeah. so next to the casino, there is a... Yes, I just starved to death at the steering wheel with my poor homie helplessly in the passenger seat. <laughs> I just kidding, hold on. <laughs> My colleague picked me up, drove me to hospital, and as soon as I get discharged, I begin sprinting to the casino to meet Damien. I really don't want to tell him the reason I'm so late is because I died while delivering packages. As my lockpicks are all broken, I have to run there, it's not ideal. As I get close, I notice on the job app that my delivery partner has completed the shift and I get paid. Just in case saving my life wasn't enough, he got me that bread too, what a king. I meet Damien, give him the rope, and then we hang out at the clubhouse for a moment. This man is really sticking his neck out for me, which makes the next part even sadder. You see, I realise that if I just kill Damien now, I can take his stuff and run away a richer man. No, I'm kidding, I love this guy, I could never. We do go and get some takeaway food while we wait for the rest of the Sinister Souls to show up. To Damien, this was a delicious greasy meal, but to me it was absolutely saving my life, as apparently the hospitals don't feed their patients. We proceed to have one of those really good chats that can only happen when you're sitting in a car like this for some reason. It was now time to hit an ATM. Two more members of the Sinister Souls hop in with us, Tokyo and Dakota, and we all roll out to find a machine to hit. It's safe to say that cruising in a stolen SUV with an established motorcycle gang is way better than dodo delivery driving. We get in position. Should I stay in here so that I'm like literally a passenger as well? Pretty bad time to tell you that I'm an undercover police officer. Oh damn. Well, guess I gotta put you out. If the police come, I'll just hope they like Rolexes more than Damien. We pull the ATM off the wall, and just like that, I've officially completed the coolest thing I've done in NoPixel. Tokyo then holds the entire machine in his hands and hacks into it. This is why you never skip leg day. The ATM machine only had $1,000 in it, so we got unlucky. But we've learned a lot today. We experienced our first death. We made new friends. We became a victim of gambling thanks to Evil Scott, and we had a few cheap laughs along the way. Next time we're making some serious cash though, as I want to buy a new house, and most importantly, I want to completely deck out my truck. If you enjoyed this video, hit like, I love you, and goodbye.